So how often do you think about shop safety? Me? Clearly not enough. You would think almost cutting off both of my thumbs, I would, more on that later. All I know is things need to change. Some of the excuses I give myself for my lack of safety in the shop is one, my shop is a disaster, which is true. And I don't have the tools or the setup to make it safer. That's really dumb. But, but he's so cool. But that's so dumb. I mean, I don't know what to say. I said they were excuses. I didn't say they were good ones. But really, I have no good reasons why I'm being unsafe in the workshop. It comes down to a lack of caring sometimes. At least for me. I'm going to be very upfront with you in this video. Safety normally doesn't come to my mind till after I do something sketchy and get away with it. And by get away with it, I mean don't gravely injure myself. I'm more fearful of what the wife is gonna think if I injure myself than the actual injury. And you would think that fear would make me safer. But you know what they say, it's better to ask for forgiveness than permission. Wait, what? I don't think that saying works for this. One nice thing about recording yourself all the time is you get a third person point of view of yourself in the shop. And you get to see all the ways that I'm normally not safe in the shop. I mean, well, you don't get to see that because I normally edit those parts out. This year, I'm going to be focusing on keeping the shop clean, eliminating one excuse I give myself for acting a fool. Now that we have everything cleaned up, let's go ahead and look at some changes that we can make to not die in the shop or at the very least survive another day. Next, we need to talk about some nitrogen and oxygen, or more commonly referred to as air, as it's better to breathe when it's clean. I'm off to a good start by simply wearing a dust mask in the shop, but I don't want to have to wear one every second that I'm in here. Thankfully, I'm able to open up the garage door and air out the shop, but when I can't, an air scrubber would be nice. I like this system that I saw from MMCC underscore woodshop. I'm pretty sure that's how he pronounces it. Link in the description. It's what I would like to do, but... That's not in my budget right now. Back in the far past of... Um, no, not that far back. Of 2022, I went ahead and purchased this box fan and these filters, which I have yet to use. Is this the best system out there? I'll go out on the limb and say no. But this is one of those cases where something is better than nothing. Clean air to breathe is a great... Hold on a second. Better? Clean air to breathe is a great first step, but that's not gonna mean much if we don't have... World peace. Um, yes, that too. But for the focus of this video, let's talk about dust collection. This United Dust Collector is what I wanna buy. No, don't like that. To help with the top dust defender in my shop, my CNC. But that ain't happening right now, as I don't have the room or the money to buy a wind system, a Harbor Freight system, so United system, definitely not gonna happen. Let's take a look at what I do have. A shop vac, a muffler diffuser, which supposedly reduces the noise of your shop vac, but for sure cuts down the air that comes from the blower port. A fine dust dust bag, and a HEPA filter. Hold up, wait a minute. Something ain't right. When taking a closer look at the packaging, it technically says HEPA material, so I'm not sure if this is actually a HEPA filter, but hopefully it's the thought that counts. A used and emptied five gallon paint bucket, a dust deputy, a 20 foot Syntex system quick click hose cut down to 10 feet. Put that all together with some scrap wood. Clearly the easiest route would have been just to put the bucket on the floor, but I went that extra step. My shop area is small enough that I don't need some type of mobile cart design. So I went ahead and made a Lincoln Street inspired boom arm as that was all I needed in my shop. Quick side note, when I say inspired by, I mean the idea and not the look, clearly. And lastly, I went ahead and purchased this remote outlet switch. Mm. 
Now, look at this picture and this picture and try to find the difference. They're the same picture. This Syntec hose is perfect for my Sanders dust collection. And for the miter saw, well, it does what it can. For the table saw, I have this Home Depot dust separator. I just need to move this hose to here, and that's pretty much it. If you're looking for more information on dust collection, Lincoln Street has a great and easy to understand video. I'll also link that in the description. Warning, semi-graphic image incoming. You can use the timestamps to skip ahead. This is a picture of my right thumb. I injured it when I was young and dumb. Oh, wait, it was 2020. Okay, I was just dumb. I did this on the table saw. I was trying to rip down some boards and thankfully I learned from the first time I hurt my left thumb. We'll get back to that one. And I set the blade just high enough to rip through the boards, but I ended up running my thumb across the blade. Why wasn't I using a push stick? Great question. I'm guessing I couldn't find the push stick that I never used back then. Regardless, I'm pretty sure this was all due to a lack of organization on my part. And for this next topic, let's pretend like that's the case. If things have a place, you're one, gonna be able to find it. No way. But more importantly, you'll actually be able to use them. I tend to be disorganized. This lack of organization wastes a lot of shop time, and since I'm being honest, causes me just to proceed without any care for safety. So any amount of organization will help out with safety and efficiency. No need to make this complicated. First, let's go ahead and remove some of these tripping hazards from the floor and use the ceiling space to our advantage. I have some tools that I use maybe three or four times a year that I don't need laying around and being in the way. I have children for that. That was a sick burn and one that my kids will not hear unless I force them to watch this video, which I might just do. I need something that's gonna be lightweight as I'm gonna be installing this myself and I also don't plan on storing anything heavy on the ceiling. The best ceiling storage option I found for me was from a Crafted Workshop video. He also has some free plans to go with it, so that's nice. I mean, I didn't use any instructions as that's for the weak-minded, or you know, the, what do they call them? People who don't want to waste time making mistakes. Quick side note, there's a water line behind this wall, so if you're wondering why I'm building this so weirdly, it's because I'm trying to avoid busting a water line at all costs. I'm also using a lot of scrap wood and offcuts to complete this storage. This will be a trend going forward. Now that we have ceiling storage, we can go ahead and address the walls. Put that down. What's wrong with you? For this next storage option, I know exactly what to do. But in a much more real sense, I had no idea what to do. The no is a French cleat wall. Let's just start there. I like OSB, and I'm not afraid to say so. It is strong enough to do the job, and it's cheaper than the cheapest, crappiest plywood at the big box stores. I don't know if you've noticed this, but things are definitely more expensive today and inflation is high. So every dollar that you can save to invest in a tool to make your shop safer or possibly make money, because that would be good too, is a win. What I don't know is all the additional contraptions that I will be making for this wall. There are so many great ideas on YouTube, but it can quickly become overwhelming. So this is what I've decided. Hold on one second. Thunder, 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 yes. Thundercats. So this is what I've landed on for now, as I can expand in the future once I figure out what exactly I need access to over time. In my one car garage, I want as much space on the floor as I can get, as I tend to have to move things around a lot. So I decided to have almost everything at workbench height and up. And as flush to the wall as possible. 
shop cabinets would be great and I know exactly where to put them, but that's where my Maslow CNC is. So in a more real sense, I have nowhere to put them. Whitworks has a great video about shop cabinets if you're into those things or have the room. I store all of my finishes and paints and pretty much anything I don't want covered in dust in my second garage area. But here in the sawdust factory, I decided just to use some cheapest toolboxes for storage with the help of the fridge cleat wall. As I tend to have to move things from garage to garage and don't want to lock any tool down to one area. This is a big one, offcut storage. Small in size, but mighty is my thought that I might actually do something with this one day, other than drop it. I've created a hardwood and softwood bucket. Oh, hold on. This should help me eliminate throwing offcuts wherever I want, and I'm gonna establish a rule. If the bucket is full, then the offcut goes in the trash. This is a rule that probably is gonna be broken often. For the medium size offcuts, I'm going to go ahead and store those in the ceiling storage or next to my CNC. For larger sheet good offcuts, I'm going to store them in this little doorway as I'm not allowed to use this door per the wife, as too much dust gets inside the house. But in case of an emergency, there's enough room to get out. I also added some simple brackets to both sides of the garage walls. This is to store boards. One side is going to be for softwood and the other side is going to be for hardwoods. I came about making this video because I've realized that I need to check myself before I wreck myself. And that's just what I recorded. That last one happened with, oh, where did I put the keys at? Where are my keys? Keys, did I drop them? It's not like they're in my pocket. So like I missed them, this is how I did it last time. I ripped it out of my pocket and then I hurt myself. Don't, don't cut yourself this time, man. All right, cool. That last one I did with these keys. Warning, semi-graphic image incoming. You can use the timestamps to skip ahead. So you might be asking, how did I do this? Let's take a trip back to 2017. I was in the middle of remodeling my in-laws bathroom and I needed to rip down some boards for some trim with the saw blade set way too high. I was trying to hurry up and finish for the night and lost focus. An offcut started to fall off the table and out of instinct, I reached for it and dropped my thumb right on the blade. A more faithful reenactment would have had me outside on a deck with the table saw on top of an old metal table. Oh, and it was at night. Thankfully, I quickly pulled it back and did not cut into the bone. I want to think that I learned my lesson, but you know that old saying, time heals all wounds. Well, sort of. Which can lead us to get too comfortable in the shop. And that's when the countdown to the next injury starts. Blacktail Studio has a great video on the danger of power tools. If you haven't checked it out, you should. And if you already watched it, maybe you should watch it again. But after this video. Obviously. In the spirit of safety, I made a let's not mess around. Dang. And find out board. I'm gonna use this board to put my shop safety rules on with room to expand. Here are some main rules that I'm gonna be following. One, pay attention to what you're doing. Two, take your time. Don't rush the process. Three, Take the time to figure out how to make the cut safer. Normally, this is gonna mean that you're gonna to need to take the time and four. Um, yeah, make a jig. Five. Sometimes you just need to stop and get back to it tomorrow. Now that I have my mind right, I can buy a fire can. Is that joke too late or too early? Let me know. 
Now that we have all that out the way, we can create some tools to keep us safer in the shop. Let's start with the push stick. I don't technically have one. You sure about that? Well, I mean, technically I do, and it works, but it's also garbage. So I never cared to take the time to actually make a good push stick. And boy, do I regret that. I should have done this much sooner. So nice that I made it twice. I took inspiration from April Wilkerson and Jay Bates for the design of my push stick. I like the design of having this sacrificial piece at the bottom and the back. So whenever it gets too damaged, I can just cut the bottom off and reattach a new back. And I have a new push stick. Making it long allows me to safely and easily remove cuts out of the way. Then I also had to make a fancier pair of push sticks because YouTube. And I made a child size version for the wife because she has baby hands. This one is probably gonna be display only. Jigs are another great way of keeping your hands safe and out of danger. So let's start with the OG, the table saw sled. The table saw sled is a jig, right? I think so. I started with taking inspiration from a bourbon moth video as I already happen to have this metal thing and this metal thing. I hit a mental roadblock when it came to building this table saw sled. It only took me a day to build, eventually, but I wasted more than a week thinking about all the things that I could potentially add to this sled. But at the same time wondering if I should, or if I would have a better use for these metal things in the future. Then I came to a realization. I could add those additional contraptions when I actually need them. Better to build a jig when you need one, than waste your time building one that you don't need. So in the end, I made a slightly more than basic table saw sled, but I didn't include those extra metal rails. I did pull a page out of Scott Walsh's playbook and bought some metal rails for the sliders. I also took the idea for this replaceable wood insert from Paulson Woodworking. I'm pretty sure that's how he pronounces it. Again, links to everything in the description. Do you have any of these rollers? They work great as a extra hand, but I got mine from Harbor Freight. Why is it that Harbor Freight tools always seem to unscrew themselves? This isn't a joke, this is a real question. I'm guessing because I bought it at Harbor Freight. But then I saw a video from Jay Bates and he made this awesome in feet jig. Added bonus, I could make this out of scrap material. I chose to make a short version of this, but if needed, it's pretty quick to make a longer version. When I had that brown pants moment when using a router, I took the time to get inspired to find a safer way to make these table legs. And that's when I came across this elephant from Inspired Woodcraft. This is a great way to cut out templates, or when I need to replace the push sticks, sacrificial bottom. But there's much more that you can do with this, but for me, these are the main items that I'm using it for. For years, I've lacked safety when using a miter saw. I've used it with no additional support other than my hand. When I bought a new miter saw, it came with this free stand with built-in supports, which is nice, but I also hate it. I have no idea why. But since I mainly cut down 2x4s on it, I'll just live with it. But if you like your miter stand, but are looking for some updates, you should check out Bustin' Knuckle Woodworks. He has two videos on miter saw stands that I think you will enjoy. But if you don't have a miter saw stand, David, David. David. from Worst Workshop, has a great video about making an easy, versatile, and inexpensive miter saw stand. Links in the description. I don't know about you, but I tend to work with a lot of large sheet material like OSB. You are unique among your brothers. Or I guess plywood if you're into that. 
I feel like an outfit table is a must have in the workshop. But in my small shop, that needs to be combined with my workbench. And my current setup is not working for me. I'm in the process of working on a new outfit table, but that's a video for next time. Now that the workshop is clean and organized enough, and I have some new tools to work safer, I think we're gonna be A-OK. -okay. I hope I didn't just jinx us. Consistency is gonna be key, as accidents are gonna happen. So we have to do our best to mitigate them by prioritizing safety where we can, as I like my thumbs, for my blood to stay inside my body, and for my lungs to work. So this was my version of a shop tour, and like medicine in your jello or broccoli in your hamburger, you're welcome. What did I miss? What do I still need to do? And what did you catch that I did wrong? Like these ducks here, they're glued on the wrong side. My bad. I'm gonna get back to work on my workbench, which should be the next video. And it should be up here somewhere eventually when it's done. I saved a life, my own. Am I a hero? I really can't say, but yes.